excited to talk about underwear. Uh, funny thing is, she asked, you know, everyone wears underwear. Don't ever ask that question when you get into a focus group, okay? Uh, you'll be surprised some of the answers that you get. Uh, today, what I want to do is just, one, introduce myself, Brad Cooper, Senior Director of Product Innovation for Fruit of the Loom. I basically head up all the innovation efforts for Fruit of the Loom, Russell Athletic, and Vanity Fair Intimate Apparel. So what I want to do very quickly, I avoided the word briefly, all right? No pun intended there. What I want to do is just walk you through a little behind the scenes uh, kind of uh, view of what we do and how we look at, at your world of underwear very, very differently. So what this will do today is it will allow you to see uh, that behind the scenes look at how we kind of quote unquote think outside the box in relationship to your underwear. So we at Fruit of the Loom are dedicated to, to really think about what our wearers want and what our wearers need in underwear. I, I, I kind of I kind of felt bad, right? We had people coming out on scooters and a guy had satellites in his briefcase. I'm wearing underwear. That's about all I've got for you, right? So this is, this is an exciting subject. It's very unique, very different. I never would have thought I saw myself uh, creating underwear and working in a place where walking down the hall holding uh, a, a pair of ladies' undergarments is completely normal for a guy, okay? That's very, very unique. One of the things... Um, that you'll notice about our company is that uh, we have been innovating for a long time. Fruit of the Loom has been, a long, uh, been here for a long time, about 163 years of innovative thought. Now, a lot of people uh, don't think that underwear can be innovative, right? When we talk about innovation, we talk about uh, uh, things that are cutting edge, we think about technology, we think about a lot of different things, not underwear. But underwear can be very, very innovative. As you see there, we were actually awarded trademark number 418. That was one year after the first trademark laws were established. So within the first 500 trademarks ever to be released uh, to the public. So our founder had a vision for what he wanted for this company. Uh, and so you see for 163 years, we've been thinking very differently about something that most people don't take a lot of thought. Every day you go to your underwear drawer and you pick something up and you put it on. And that's about all you think about. I'm, I'm good, I think about what I'm gonna wear on the outside. You don't give a whole lot of thought about that underwear. Well, guess what? There are a lot of people that think a lot, a lot about that garment or that product that you're gonna use. So throughout history, uh, what we've seen is we've seen uh, a lot of underwear innovation, okay? Just some examples. You see the difference in the types of underwear throughout history changed over time. One of the things that uh, that we don't think about is, is some of those things that make our lives easier. So one of the, one of the examples I want to show you today is the original union suit, okay? The original union suit was worn as an underwear garment. Underneath the suit, underneath the dress, uh, it, was a, it was basically a full body suit. Uh, can you imagine how hard that would be if you couldn't use the restroom other than halfway undressed to go there, right? So early underwear innovation, easy to, to use, it, it fits a need. Uh, those are some of the things that people don't normally think about, but that's very important. At the time, that was earth shattering. Uh, that really helped people uh, make sure that they could function on a daily basis in the most efficient manner. One of the other things is the boxer short. How did the boxer short come about? Well, uh, back in history, boxers wore uh, these shorts or these uh, pants about to the knee with a leather band around the belt or around the waist. Uh, the inventor of the boxer short actually said, hey, how can I help these boxers move and be more nimble and, and be more flexible? And he replaced that leather band with elastic and then the boxer short was, uh, was invented. So some of the things come from functionality, uh, come from people just thinking differently on how to uh, make sure that we are uh, servicing our customer. So over time, uh, things change. Styles change, functions change, a lot of things change, and a lot of people don't think about how underwear has changed over the past. If you look here, there's, very, there's a lot of images behind me from the 1950s. Uh, you see a very different style, very different uh, functions for underwear, right? Uh, ladies bloomers, all right, very popular back then. And no, we did not invent the skirt for dad, okay? That's just maybe a poorly drawn boxer short. Okay, but as you see these things, we have to continue to think differently about something that a lot of people don't think about. And what you'll see throughout history is we start to add things like color, 
functionality, uh, different types of fabrications that serve for different purposes uh, to, to service dads, sons, uh, daughters, mothers, a lot of different areas. So we have to be very, very innovative and forward thinking in what we do uh, in regards to underwear. So the question now becomes, what's next for your underwear drawer? What do we see in the future? What are things that are happening that impact you on a daily basis that we have to think about uh, time and time again? You know, we have to think about how can we give you the support in a garment that you can go from work to play, to say you were participating in an athletic event. You don't want to have to necessarily change all the time. We have to think about activities that people are going to do on a normal basis. Um, maybe you want to stop and break dance right in the middle of the street, right? We have, to, we have to come up with products that are unrestrictive, that actually provide a service to our consumer. Um, here you see uh, it, this, this uh, gentleman here in, in boxer shorts. The message here is these are roomy, comfortable, uh, available to you to do anything you want to do. Uh, where he's cliff diving. And then what I do on the weekend, right, I jump on trampolines on top of skyscrapers. No, we don't do that, right? But what, what that message is, is being sent there is that we want to produce fabrics that bend and flex with the body so that you can perform any task that you want to and, and not hold yourself back. So where does innovation come from? Innovation can come from a lot of different areas. Uh, it comes, first of all, from just thinking different from opening up your mind to see what the possibilities are out there. For example, um, how can we help a woman express uh, her inner beauty through uh, beautiful leopard prints or zebra prints? Vanity Fair was one of the first companies to ever introduce uh, these prints in ladies' underwear uh, as well as sleepwear. So that was very innovative at the time. Uh, we also see uh, a, a, a brand that we have under our umbrella, Spalding. They were the first to make baseballs, baseball gloves, basketballs, volleyballs, uh, liquid field golf balls, the first integrated pump in a basketball. We have to think very differently, and those kind of mindsets lead us to a lot of different uh, advancements in your garments. For example, there uh, on the top right of your screen, that's a, a fleece that was just a, a fleece hoodie that we released that has a, a dedicated media pocket for your personal electronic device. Why? Because there is a need there. The consumer wants to not throw keys and, and everything into that muff pocket and have something you spent your hard-earned money on get scratched and torn up and maybe not work. So we provide function and things like that. Uh, maybe a little known fact is that Fruit of the Loom actually came out with the first tag-free product. Uh, we came out with the first tag-free to make sure that comfort is the most important thing uh, to our consumers so that you're not getting poked by those pesky tags and that you can go through your daily activities uh, with the utmost uh, comfort. So looking here, what, what can we see for underwear of the future? What I want to do quickly is just run you through some of the technology uh, that you can uh, involve in, in different types of garments. For example, uh, you'll see on the, on the far right of the screen, phase change material that will actually absorb heat and it will hold heat and when your body cools down, it will release it back to the body. So what that does, that helps with temperature control. It helps uh, maintain a, a nice microclimate against your skin so that you're more comfortable all day. Uh, also, you can look at uh, uh, printed on technology that is activated by sweat. Uh, there you see kind of at the bottom, the blue circles. Uh, that's a polymer that can be printed onto a fabric that as you sweat, it will actively cool the body. So that promotes comfort. Uh, also can be used in, in athletics. And then you have a, a carbon molecules that are affixed to fibers that allow moisture vapor transfer. So rather than you sweating and moving that moisture, it actually acts before that, much like a, a vent on top of your microwave. As you boil water, that water vapor goes up. What happens when it hits the top of that stove? Condensation, right? And then it drips. What this does is it actively moves that moisture vapor away from the body and makes it very, very efficient for the body to do what it needs to do and cool. One of the uh, uh, well-known facts is that the average person loses about one ounce of water through pers perspiration or moisture vapor while you sleep per hour. So one ounce per hour while you sleep, you lose that. So in eight hours of sleep, you lose a cup of water uh, during your rest. So what can we do? It's our job to think of what we can do to help you 
Keep that water. Think about athletes as they're preparing for uh, games. A lot of people think about on-field performance. They don't think about the pregame and how their bodies need to use minerals and vitamins as well as energy stores to prepare themselves for the big event uh, coming up the next day. We focus on how we can make the entire uh, experience for that athlete or for that general population to be more comfortable as we regulate body temperatures and do different types of things. We can also modify fibers that you're very familiar with. Cotton, for example. We can treat cotton that will actually allow moisture to move very quickly, for it to dry, to keep you cool, and also take less water to wash. So that's also energy efficient for you at the house. So not only does it provide performance, but it also saves a little uh, money in your own pocket. We can also add antimicrobials or odor control. What that can do is that can actually destroy microbes that cause odor, and it cause uh, uh, things that would actually uh, hinder you or, or cause infections. We can add those. We can also uh, um, add chemicals to the, uh, to the uh, fabric that will actually reduce the look of cellulite, tighten the skin, and improve skin elasticity and circulation. Uh, there's a lot of different things. Now, where do these things come from? These things come from consumer needs, uh, from things that we can help provide something uh, of a need. Um, so what I want to do is I just want to give you a couple of examples of things or issues that spur innovation for us that, that may uh, or may not be something that you think about. But these definitely keep me up at night trying to find unique ways to solve for these problems. For example, right, the, dr the dreaded muffin top. We, we focus on creating an elastic that will not cut into you, creating uh, comfort strap bras, which they will not cut into you and dig in so that you can be comfortable all day. Those things we use maybe unique fibers uh, where the power curve of that fiber in the elastic doesn't max out and hit a wall and cause you to be uncomfortable. It expands as you move uh, and makes it more comfortable. The tag free we've already spoken about. Trying to make you uh, as comfortable as, as you can every day with your underwear, with your t-shirts. Uh, the dreaded wedgie, right? That's an extreme case, I know, but uncomfortable underwear placement. That's a real issue for us. You may not think about it till you have a problem, but no one wants to be in front of a lot of people, right, and have to adjust. That's a real issue. That's a real issue, right? So we think about all this, especially people who are in public uh, arenas where they're, perform where they're actually performing a, a speech, much like I am today, where we try to help them with moisture transfer or, or uh, uh, things that can be embarrassing. And even some of the extreme cases, Odor control. Don't try this at home, please. Okay? There are some people that are trying to innovate and come up with underwear that will screen out unwanted odors. That's a real thing. So a lot of things that you make fun of, that you see in the media, that is kind of a comic relief, those are very serious issues to us. And it, it requires a very, very different way to think. We must think very differently to how to solve all of these issues. Now, what is the vision for the future? What can we expect to see on the horizon uh, when we talk about apparel or underwear? There's a lot of different things that you may or may not have heard about. Conductive thread, being able to have thread that can actually transfer information, uh, that can help you identify things like heart rate, also can identify if a soldier uh, it can detect blood so that it can then relay a message to the unit commander so that he can actually go and service that, uh, that person in, in what they're doing. Uh, we also have things that can be used in the medical field, uh, like this health monitoring fabric. They can lay newborn infants on this fabric, and through technology, they can monitor their regular heart rate to see if they have any kind of heart disease or heart problems or anything that's unusual in the first few hours of life, first few days of life. There's some extreme things that we can do with technology that help service everyone. Um, adaptable yarns. Uh, some of the fire suits that are being created today have adaptable yarns where as heat rises and they're in an environment that is very dangerous, the yarn actually swells and, and, and grows to where it will not allow more heat to come through that fabric, thus protecting the firefighter from what that extreme environment is when they're trying to help people and, and service those uh, individuals that are in that life-threatening situation. Uh, light emitting and power generating fabrications. You may not know, but there's been work 
Uh, there's work being done on fabrications that can take light and convert that to energy. So if you can imagine, we talked about a fleece garment that has a dedicated pocket for your personal electronic device. How many people have seen commercials or, or experienced themselves where you're constantly having to plug your phone in, right? I gotta go find a power source. Can you imagine a fabric that actually collects light, converts it to energy, and you can power a device? Uh, there's a fabric being worked on currently that actually in one square meter can power a laptop or a cell phone. So those types of things are on the horizon, as well as uh, cloaking fabric. Uh, I, know for sure, I know that uh, the military is working on infrared reflective technology, where uh, the infrared rays produced from your body are actually reflected back uh, and not allowed to escape, thus eliminating your infrared uh, signature through those devices. So basically becoming invisible at night to infrared technology. Now, some of those technologies can also have great effects. Infrared reflective can maintain heat against the body, promote circulation, promote health, things of that nature. So there's a lot of different things that are very, very interesting in the field. And it makes us have to think very, very differently about something that you really don't take uh, a second look at. So what I want to close with today is I just want to, to encourage you, the next time that you go to your underwear drawer, and you make that very, what seems to be a very insignificant choice that morning. I want you to think of, of us. I want you to think of us in the sense that there are over 30,000 people that are dedicated to making your experience a great one. We sincerely feel that if we continue to, to think in an innovative manner and continue to solve problems for you, we can make a small decision in the morning impact greatly the rest of your day. So our motto is to start happy. Make that first choice, start happy, the rest of your day will fall along. So one thing uh, that I definitely want to leave you with today is just remember, with Fruit of the Loom, your future of underwear is very bright. Thank you very much.